Okay, today we are going to be doing the review on Keepers of the Garden by Dolores Cannon. And this video is long overdue. I finished this book like three weeks ago already and I'm already reading DNA in the Sands of Time by Jay Justice and it's so good. I'm gonna do like two parts to that one because it's so much information to cover. So as all my videos, all I do is while I was reading the book, I take notes and share with you guys what was important to me and what I think would be important to other people to share with. And this is the book, Keepers of the Garden, Dolores Cannon. It's pretty small too. Okay, let's get right into it. Okay, so Phil is gonna be the main subject um, person that the entire book is focused on. So we'll be referring to him a lot. And also it's not mentioned in the book, but I'm pretty sure the seed planters that they're talking about that created humans are the Anunnaki or Nephilim. They're the same thing, but people call them different names, Nephilim or um, Anunnaki. Okay, so let's just get right into it. So I'm literally reading directly from the book, okay? Unless I give my own opinion. So he explains that the Grey's ships are round and silver with a dome on the top for viewing and controlling. The ship's fuel is crystal power. The crystal is the channel or filter which focuses cosmic energies and directs them to generate thrust. The crystal is two feet tall. Um, does the crystal on the ship create its own power or does it draw it from somewhere else? It simply focuses the power that's in the universe. It's all around us now, even as we speak, so you can see that it doesn't harm anyone to be in this power, for obviously it's not harming us now. It's not a power source which any of us on Earth have any experience with at this time. It comes from many sources, from suns, from the energy of the universe, which is and could be called God. The God energy which permeates everywhere and everything. There are cosmic energies, astral energies, focal energies. There are many kinds of energies which can be used for many different purposes. People can't understand the tremendous speeds that these vehicles have been observed at. Well, this is accomplished by writing circuits of energy. There are circuits of energy which connect different parts of the galaxies to each other. And by merely putting oneself on these circuits and by proper direction of the energies, one can be propelled at extremely fast speeds. These craft use the principles of levitation and common space travel by the solar winds or rivers. There are between systems of stars and planets, vast rivers of energy, um, which flow through the universe and so it is a simple matter to align your craft with these vast rivers and to simply go with the flow so to say not unlike the concept of using river navigation in this planet earth and phil goes on to say that the cosmos is populated much more than the common person has any inkling of or any idea about the cosmos is extremely populated and well-traveled and utilized. We know the scientists on Earth are trying to pick up signs of life by listening for radio waves, but they're trying to pick up signs of life as they know it or at a level which they are on. If they knew how to try and pick up signs of life at a level far in excess of what they are on, they would be pleasantly surprised. They might be quite startled to understand even a portion of what is truly going on. The fault with sciences on this planet is that it is closed to any idea of something which is foreign to that which is observed on Earth. In other words, that which exists is o that which exists is only that which can be perceived through the instruments available at this time. So it's just going to show how, um, I guess, like beginner level we are. I know we're pretty advanced and. A lot of races from the past, um, not as advanced as Atlantis yet, but um, we still aren't looking through the right instruments. That's basically what they're telling us. Okay, so the parallel life that they're accessing, that they're accessing in the regression, is a um, it's a fourth dimensional planet. So we're in Phil's fourth dimensional um, past life. 
So everything here is energy. Energy can be moved and manipulated just like matter. It takes only the realization that this is possible in order to do so. You don't, you also don't necessarily die. You disformulate your vehicle in the fourth dimension. When one's usefulness has expired or they have met their lessons, there's no longer a need for that vehicle. So it is disformulated and the energy is returned to wherever it's needed. However, the entity's personality remains separate um, from their body. Phil makes it clear that yes, people from other planets did come to Earth and influenced our ancestors to learn new things and better their lives because if it wasn't for visitors, the human race would have never evolved. This was from the beginning of the human race and before. And um, I don't think it talks about it that much in this book, but in the next video review I'm gonna do on DNA and the sands of time, we're gonna go very in depth into that and who those civilizations were. Okay, so basically it doesn't say which alien race were the cedars of planet Earth. Um, but I just mentioned it in the, in the beginning, so now we know who we're talking about. Um, they are the gardeners. They're constantly gardening us, if that makes sense. Phil says it's no accident that the physical bodies which humans wear at this time are as they are, for it was carefully planned that they be just such or just so. He also says we are speaking of an actual physical seeding, such as planting cells in a hospitable environment like the water of a lagoon or in a swamp or in the forest floor and then allowing them to germinate and grow forth from there okay actually i just realized something um this is from the next book that i'm gonna but to fill in the gaps in this and to not make it confusing in this video the race that created humans are the anunnaki or nephilim whatever you want to call them the race that created planet earth itself to make it habitable for life i don't know what they're called yeah so um that's that um i've never read anything like this before but phil's subconscious mind or higher self as we would call it was actually not giving dolores a lot of information lots of the questions she was asking about the aliens that garden does was not to be answered due to whatever regulations his higher self was obliged to follow. Supposedly, Dolores thinks it's because he's one of the only clients she's ever had who could be in a somewhat somnambulistic state, but also consciously remember the entire session. Because usually, if you're in the somnambulistic state, which is the deepest state of trance, you usually will, um, your consciousness will be like separated. It'll be like not a part of the convo and you won't consciously remember what even happened during the session but he somehow can so that's interesting um so i think maybe that's why his subconscious was not allowing a lot of information to come through which was very interesting phil also mentioned three reasons why he felt information could not come through when he was asked a question so this is what he believes um, was the reason one it was not allowed to be given and he could not override this himself Two, it was simply not available and he was totally unable to manufacture information when this happened. And three, if he felt that the emotional climate of the question would bring with it disturbing feelings or scenes. Um, yeah, so in this case, his subconscious would act as a sensor and um, ask us to change the subject. So the question is, wouldn't animal and human life have eventually evolved also? The evolutionary theory claims that everything began and descended from these first cells answer is um that's merely speculation the planet was ready for the seeding and was so seeded there was an intent and purpose for this planet and so it was utilized as a vehicle for these intentions you would look at a garden in the same manner by saying that you have the ground tilled the fertilizer in place the rains are coming we ask you, would you then sit back and wait for your crops to grow? Do you expect that your tomatoes would come up in this row and your potatoes in that merely by sitting back and allowing them or hoping they would do so? Could you grow your garden in this manner? Or of course not, for there has to be the direction. 
there has to be manipulation, if you will, to achieve desire, the desired results. For certainly, your crops will not spontaneously grow in the way you wish them to. So it's the same here. This planet was as a garden, which had become ready for planting in order to sustain and grow that crop which was desired of it. That is a purpose that is seeding accomplished, that the seeding accomplished, and that was to plant the garden. So the life on Earth grew from single called simple amoeba type characters, and then through mutation began to divide and reproduce into multiple celled creatures, which in turn evolved into organisms and higher ordered creatures, which in turn evolved into amphibians and reptiles and so forth. Um, and yes, the beings from outer space did have something to do with what forms the life took. For the most part, it was guided very carefully initially in order to progress and evolve to that point where it could simply be left to its own devices. Assistance became no longer necessary after the life forms had evolved to a high degree to that stage which was desired. So when it reached that point, there was withdrawn the assistance which was of a guiding nature and given the assistance which was simply a nurturing nature. In the infantile stages of evolution, it was necessary to guide the evolution much as a very young child or infant needs almost constant supervision from birth until it gradually and slowly grows to the point where less and less supervision is needed until eventually no supervision is needed and it becomes an entity of its own. So scientists who believe in evolution have searched for what they call the missing link and the evolutionary chain between animal and man. There will not be found any link as link really exist hmm i don't know why it says it like that i'm trying to say that there's no link there's no missing link many times there were no such gradual evolution but a sudden and radical departure from that which had been a mutation so to say these jumps in evolution were profound and radical but were often instantaneous within one generation um we're gonna clear this up in the next video i'm not gonna talk about it now we're gonna get through this so what phil's higher self says about the dinosaurs is that they were evolutionary their appropriateness had expired and so that reality which assured their destruction was made manifest i it always is a matter of what is appropriate and following that for in so doing one follows the true path so as their appropriateness had ended so did their existence the reason for their extinction was a natural process in the tilt of the axis which caused the seasons to change abruptly those who could adapt to the rapid changes adapted those who could not did not the change was that quick for the earth tilted on its axis so that which was warm and sunny suddenly within minutes was found to be cold and frigid the large the large dinosaurs were killed for they could not adapt um their bodies were simply suited to one particular type of climate and could not tolerate any change and so they died they were simply just too large to adapt so quickly. There was no place for them to go, but the smaller animals could hide and run under objects, for example, and could collect leaves and grass around them and so build to build a warm environment. The large animals, however, could not do this and so were left to the elements and died. There also were humans alive at this point, and yes, scientists have always said that humans came along much later than the dinosaurs but scientists are always saying things and will continue to do so i thought that was funny however they have no unlimited access to knowledge and so must make their deductions from the knowledge which is available to them at that point so the truth at that point is based merely on what is available but now they have found remains from humans with the dinosaur remains but it has not been widely accepted for this is a radical viewpoint which is being introduced to a point of view which has been around for many years. You see, the scientific community is slow to change and is resistant to change because then truth must be rewritten. This characteristic is inherent for it is common throughout humankind. That which is called truth is considered sacred and it is never to be changed. So there's going to be a lot of resistance for then one loses the ground on which one bases their beliefs. The theory of this jump from animal to human being caused by beings from outer space physically breeding with animals is true. The genetic stock had reached a point where it could not go much further without new genetic information, and so it was given. If this had not occurred, the human form would have stagnated somewhat towards the Neanderthal. The functioning humans we have now would 
not have come about through natural evolution or had it been so many years, millions of years would have been necessary. Um, so basically it's saying that it would have taken like millions of years for us to evolve like this, or maybe we wouldn't have evolved to this form at all. Um, however, it is doubtful that any such occurrence would ever have happened naturally as the evolution had reached the point at which it could go no further naturally. And to be clear, it was not physical on physical, um, like we would think, but artificial insemination. The council has said that um, the two schools of thought, like Darwinism and um, creation, are both parts of the truth. Um, these are the two schools of thought. Creationism means that all life was brought into being suddenly by the act of some superior supernatural power that all life, I mean, supernatural power normally called God, Evolutionism means that all life developed through a natural evolutionary process from a single living source. Arguments against evolution are based partly on the fact that controlled experiments show that a species reached a point or a limit beyond which it will not develop further on its own. After that point, mutations can occur through genetic manipulation. This is not the only form in the universe and this is also not the place this form is in the universe. There is so much jealousy regarding um, discoveries in our planet. The leaders want them just for their own countries. And Phil completely agrees. There is a profit motive here on this planet Earth, which is not shared in this Federation system that we speak. There in the Galactic Federation, the need for self-aggrandizement just simply not exist. Um, and so all discoveries are thought of as shared. As they are discovered, there is not the concept of personal gain at work, for there is no such concept. And so there is no need for secrecy or belittlement or professional jealousies, as is found here on Earth. Earth's problems is people always have to guard everything as a secret, especially since the knowledge usually goes into the form of developing weapons as a defense. These galactic beings have no need for that, for there is no defense industry. There is no competition. Competition has no concepts in that civilization. He later goes on to say this planet is not so unique as it has simply progressed to where it is now through many of the same accidents and defaults which have befallen other planets. So in terms of what we would call physical levels of existence on other planets, there are approximately 10,000 variations in this sector of the universe of the physical life form. One which is, as you might say, carbon based in matter and which is, as you might say, receptive to your senses of touch and so forth. So one such example is a race of beings that live at the edge of our known universe in a mint green planet. If we were to go there, we would see these beings as shadows merely because our vibrations as humans would be so different and if we were to reach out and touch them, we would feel pressure, but we wouldn't feel it like a solid object, if that makes sense. If these beings were to be in our earthly vicinity, they would perceive humans as rocks or stones from their point of view because our vibrations are so dense. Um, it would be as if you saw a being made of rock or stone. That's how dense we appear to them. Earth people are altogether at different vibrations and it would be amazing to them. They would see how you would, how they would see how you have to be told things that they know instantly and telepathically. You have to have turn signals on our car to say that you're going to turn. You have to have road signs and stoplights to tell you when to go so you don't run into each other. All of these things you take for granted, but it would never be necessary for them because of their high level of awareness. It's all automatic. It's known they travel telepathically too. Um, when they think about going somewhere, they just go there. They are almost totally telepathic because they don't have any kind of a vocal system or vocal tract. Um, there are in this universe many who are similar to your physical bodies. In fact, there are several planets on which were you to land, you would find that the inhabitants looked almost identical. In fact, you could not tell that they were not human because in fact, they are human. The human species is not peculiar to this planet. It is however, one model of physical body which has been used throughout the universe with much success on planets which are similar in environment to your own. For the human body is quite adept at this type of environment. 
There are, however, many physical bodies similar to your own, which could not survive on this planet. We would say that there are many, many forms of what you might call non-humanoid creatures um, who have intellect is far beyond that which is even possible in humankind. For the brain structure, which is the translator for the soul energy to physical here on this planet, would be so highly inadequate to not even be able to support life for the life concept given from the soul energy would not be able to be translated. So the physical body would simply die from lack of nourishment. There are many bodies which possess a highly refined degree of attunement to that which is pure energy such that they need no sustenance, such as what you might call food on this planet and derive their nourishment directly from what you might call the astral or cosmic energy. The molecular cellular structure of these bodies is one of a highly charged etheric nature and which are continually replenished through the mental processes of the soul. The life force which sustains your human bodies is derived from the fact that this force is in the meat and vegetables with which you constitute your meals. It is not that this life force cannot be derived in other ways, it is simply that this is however the custom on this planet. And so you can see that with proper attunement, one could easily on this planet with this physical body sustain your life force through entirely mental processes. It is simply that you have grown accustomed to living off of the life force and food. Um, so then Phil goes on to explain a very highly refined and sophisticated creature, very highly um, social in nature with a social structure which is reminiscent of the bee colonies of Earth. So get this, they're about three feet tall, somewhat onion shaped, and their bodies are not motivated by propulsion, but tentacles which radiate downward from the lower part of their body. So I've never seen beings like this, but I'm gonna show you. Page 189, let's see. These are the ones he's talking about. Crazy, right? Okay. Oh, what happened? There is given the ability to project oneself to a higher plane when that becomes necessary, and their physical body would then cease to function as a living unit and would decompose back to the elements um, from which it was made. The combinations are quite endless for there are more, many more variations of life than one human could possibly imagine. He also goes on to say that traveling the universe mentally is far superior than physically. It's simply a matter of allowing it to happen. Okay, so the aliens are not going to just land in Washington DC in the lawn of the White House. This would cause such a state of panic as to be counterproductive. Disclosure must be done very, very carefully and very subtly for the human psyche has very little tolerance for that which is not of its understanding. They allow people to see them in different isolated spots, so there is a gradual belief. However, it is inevitable that they will come out in the open and allow everyone to see them, for that is simply one of the steps of the evolutionary process of raising this planet to universal consciousness. Okay, so I thought this was interesting. Dolores asks, Phil's subconscious if she can share this information in her work and he says if someone does not wish to believe this do not profess to this being the real truth because truth is what one makes it if they are ready to accept it let them do not try to change their beliefs against their wishes I understand that you would not try to influence someone else I merely wish to emphasize that this is for those who wish it those who do not are not wrong not to take it they're merely not ready to take it. If they were ready to take it, they would understand it. Let them be the judge. There are many who can understand. There are many more who will be able to understand. Let them seek it out in their own time because at that time when they are ready, they will seek it out and find it. It's all part of your goal. Um, so it began to sound like the aliens knew something was going to happen to our earth. In anticipation, they were preparing another planet for migration. Some humans would be taken in their earthly physical bodies to inhabit that new world. Others would apparently die here, but their spirits could travel to the new world if they wished and reincarnate in physical bodies that would be similar to those left on earth and therefore would be familiar, familiar to them. Could this be one of the motives behind the experimentation being conducted by the aliens? 
not only the analyzing and observation of our species evolvement and reaction to disease and environmental influences, but the continual search for a perfection of our species. This was the original plan that had been spoiled by the weeds that had centered, that had entered the garden at the time of the meteor crash. Um, this was what had um, uh, crashed their hopes at the time of creating a perfect world free of defects and disease. Even though they had to settle for the lesser development as our species adjusted to its surroundings, it seemed that they had not given up on their dream of creating a utopia, a second garden of Eden for humankind. And I also find it strange that Phil in his childhood and adult encounters with the short greys, that he always says he felt so much love coming from them, whereas people typically say they feel that the greys are emotionless. Then again, it could be a different kind of gray. It could be many factors that determine this, but I thought I should include that note. And I also just realized from the book that I'm reading now that I think all the gray beings they're talking about in all the Dolores Cannon books are actually Zeta Reticuli, which are completely different from the grays. The grays would actually be the lower vibrational ones. And the Zeta Reticuli split off from their gray rays to be the benevolent ones, the good ones. Or else why would it, why would Phil feel so much love coming from it? You know, it doesn't make sense. Um, so as your planet is entering its death throes and making ready for drastic traumatic changes, another planet, a new one, a fresh one, and unspoiled is being readied for those who would make the journey. It is as yours once was pristine and unsullied. During the coming upheavals, many will not survive and others will desire to relocate. Hopefully the same mistakes will not be made in that new world. So if someone did choose to go to that world, it would be done physically in spaceships and the planet is not in our solar system, but it is within the galaxy. It's similar and not similar to Earth. There would be a period of acclimation necessary for our human bodies, which had become acclimated to the energy of this planet to realign to that new energy. There would be a feeling of disorientation, a period of melancholy, However, the sustaining energies on that planet would eventually heal those imbalances left by the energies of this planet. That planet would also be much more conducive to your human life forms than this planet. The planet is not inhabited now by humans, but there are those who are of a more custodial or constructive nature still working on it to prepare it for those of you who would choose to inhabit it. It is not inhabited, but populated, yes. For those that choose to go to this planet will remember that they left. There will be no loss of consciousness. However, only those that would be most productive on that planet would be allowed to migrate. Those who would introduce like criminal element would not be allowed because there are certain restrictions for coming to this planet. Those that are now assisting in the energy redirection of planet Earth will be assisting Earthlings in this transportation. They are those who are talk taking the samples and abductions, as you call them. They themselves have experienced in their past the destruction of their planet in a similar fashion and the subsequent migration to another planet. So we're talking about the greys or Zeta Reticuli's history now. They are well suited to the task of assistance because they can draw personally from that knowledge of the events which happened on their planet. They themselves have volunteered for this assignment as they can well relate to the necessities that are involved in transplanting a society in mass from one planet to another. There are many different types of helpers involved here. Not all are from one planet, but they all share in some form or another the desire to assist those of you on this planet to help in raising your consciousness and allowing you to become more aware of not only yourselves, but those around you and to be aware of and to be able to relate to and share in the love of that which you call the universe, that Christ or God energy of which the universe is made of and is so routinely denied on this planet. So thus man must come to the realization that he is more than he consciously perceives. He is more than it is possible for him to perceive. perceive. He is immortal and as an immortal soul, his horizons and experiences are boundless and totally unlimited. He plays at the game of life in whatever form or dimension he finds it. 
until eventually through eons he attains the sought for perfection and returns at last to his source the ultimate source of all the creator from which everything has sprung let us remove our earthly blinders and allow our insight to soar then we will discover how small and narrow our self-imposed limitations really are the universe is our world and nothing is impossible so in conclusion yes the extraterrestrials are here the aliens live among us already they are here in three ways as spirits who have been born into human bodies as outer space beings who have formulated bodies acceptable to dwell among us undetected and as those visitors who live in secret bases observing and watching they have all come to save us from ourselves it would be useless for people to form witch hunts to find them and point them out and say you are one unless they are willing to also look at themselves in the mirror and say you are one for they are our ancestors, our relatives, our brothers and sisters. Their blood flows in the veins of every living creature on this earth. The latest ones have come complete with programming and imprints of past lives and emotions to help them deal with life in our chaotic world. They are an infusion of new blood that does not believe that fear and war and destruction are the answer to anything. They are programmed with love, peace, and understanding. They are also more sensitive to the emotions and feelings of others. Yes, I mean, yet they seldom know their true heritage. The rising suicide rate among teenagers is evidence that many of these gentle newcomers can't adjust to, um, uh, cannot adjust no matter how spiritually high their intentions were in volunteering for this job. The way of life on this planet is just too painful for them. Since there's no way to distinguish star people and since very few of us know the journeys of our own souls, there's no sense in wondering about it. We must simply try to incorporate the beliefs and aims of the star people into our lives and help them to save our planet. Yes, the aliens are here and you know what? Thank God that they are, for without them, we would have been lost by now.